Hello, friends and neighbors. Jake Perrine, lead trainer at Warp Academy. And I'm here today to introduce you to the new drum bus audio effect included in Live 10 standard and suite versions. This is an awesome new effect. I'm looking forward to using this on a regular basis. To celebrate the launch of Live 10, our crew at Warp Academy has made a new course for you. It's called Warp 10, and it's the absolute fastest way to get up to speed on the new instruments, effects, and power features in Live 10. You get expert video tutorials by our team of Ableton certified trainers, plus sweet downloads like project files, samples, and synth patches to amp up your library. Oh, and did we mention that right now, it's totally free to sign up. Click the link, bounce over to Warp Academy, and the whole course, it's yours. You can think of Drum Bus as a multi-effect. It does one very specific common job you would previously do with multiple processors and chains. I would lump this one in with other audio effects like filter delay, the glue compressor, and even the new echo and pedal audio effects because they all do one specific job that are a combination of other effects. So in order to reproduce the kind of processing you find in drum bus, you would otherwise need a utility, a multiband compressor, some kind of transient shaper, the saturator, a low pass filter, and some kind of sub synth. Now most of those already exist in live, but some of them are new. And it's awesome that Ableton has included this new audio effect for doing this one specific thing. As the name implies, this audio effect is intended for drums, but of course you're going to try it on everything now, aren't you? So let's take Drum Bus for a test drive. What we're looking at here is a live recording of six channels of drums, kick, snare, hat, three toms, and an overhead. And each of these tracks has its own set of processing that I've put on them, just to contain their dynamics a little bit, shape the tone a little bit and then I've grouped the whole lot of them into a group track and put the drum bus onto the drum group track. Let me bypass the drum bus and let's play through the drums in their current state. It's a pretty straight ahead drum groove. Lots of space in it, which makes it kind of perfect for this particular tutorial. I'm going to turn the drum bus on, and you're going to hear immediately some difference in volume and tonality, just so you can hear what drum bus is capable of. Excellent. So right away you can see how much chunkier and full and full of thud those drums really are. Let's go through each of the controls one at a time so you can hear what they do. I'm going to reset a bunch of these to their default state so we're not hearing their effects altogether, but rather one at a time. So I like to go through a plugin in a kind of linear fashion so you can think about gain stages as you travel through the plugin. And the first two are fairly straightforward and simple. They are the trim adjustment, which allows you to reduce the gain coming into the plugin, which is very handy. I wish more plugins had this feature. Alternately, you could simply put a utility plugin before the drum bus audio effect, and that would allow you to lower the gain coming into the drum bus. But it's thoughtful that they provided the trim here because so much of this plugin is based around dynamics and saturation processing. Likewise, there's a very rudimentary compressor that you can engage prior to the drum bus processing that simply gives your incoming signal a little bit of snug and leveling, which helps the drum bus do its thing. Now, you don't get any controls for working with this compressor, but again, if you want that kind of control, you could simply put a compressor audio effect before the drum bus and dial in your own settings there, but handy to have these nonetheless. Really, the meat and potatoes of this particular audio effect is the drive control and the three different types of saturation emulation going on here. Now, the drive control is very similar to the drive control on a saturator audio effect, and you've got three different types of saturation to choose from with these controls here. The soft control 
the manual describes as a wave shaping distortion, the medium is a limiting distortion, and hard is a clipping distortion, which also adds some bass boost. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and listen to the effect of these three different types of saturation. I'm going to play the drums, turn up the drive control a little bit, and then switch between the three different types. Awesome. So lots of different tonalities to choose from just by the different types of saturation you're working with. What I'd like to do is try the compressor and the trim controls, maybe with the medium setting of the saturation, and let's hear their effect. So even just 5 dB down, and really we're only hearing major saturation artifacts on the kick and the snare, but as we go all the way up to zero, definitely the whole signal is involved in the saturation. Listen to that. Great. And now I'm going to throw on this compressor just so you hear a little bit of that. Now, given that each of the drums individually have compressors on them, that sounds like a lot too much on the compression side of things to my ears, but very useful to have that there. The next column of controls really dials in the specifics of the saturation for the mids and highs in your signal. Crunch dials in exactly how much of the distortion you're hearing, and its color is affected by the damp control, which is essentially a low pass filter that you can pull down so that the cymbals and the edges of all your drum hits don't have quite that spiky sound that they currently do. The transients knob is a fascinating control that emphasizes or de-emphasizes the transients of your drums, meaning the very first few milliseconds that you're hearing. So if you want snappy drums with a nice sharp edge on them, you can add some transient into the mix. And if you'd rather mellow them out a little bit, you can remove the transients from them. And this really changes the sense of how the drums were played initially. Let's listen to all three of these in action. Awesome. So much potential to play with there. You can drastically alter the character of your drums in many different directions, just with the controls we've gone over so far. But more than likely, I am going to place my money on this third section as being the real popular section in the drum bus audio effect. And this is a subharmonic synthesizer. It features one particular frequency and adds additional harmonic content. In short, you can take just about any drum sample or live recording and turn it into an 808. So I'm going to turn back the crunch so we can just really focus on what's happening in the low end. You can think of this column as the highs and mids, and this would be the low end of your drum signal. Watch over here in the bass column for a visual representation as I add more boom into this mix.
that's adding a whole lot of boom. Now I'm going to move the frequency of the boom around with the frequency knob here. As I move the frequency knob, I want you to watch down here in this little box, and then I'll, we'll talk about what this is afterwards. Nice. So if you are watching this little box down here, you're seeing different notes occur. And this is super handy. If your particular song is in G, you can dial in the frequency knob until you're emphasizing the note G, which is the fundamental or root note in the G scale. Or you could dial in a D, which is the fifth, etc. As you move the frequency around, you can dial in exactly what you want. If I go over to my kick drum channel here, and let's solo that just for a second. And I'm going to look at the frequency spectrum in the background of the EQ8, which is super handy, so I can see what the fundamental frequency of this kick drum as it currently is. And you can see that the energy of the kick drum is focused somewhere around 50 hertz. That's where this cutoff happens to be. And that tells me that the energy is most pronounced around 50 hertz. So back to my drum bus plugin, and you'll see that I've got it dialed in here. Let's go to 50, 51, somewhere in that range. And it says it's a G note, a little bit higher than a G note, a G zero plus. So it's a little bit sharp. So somewhere in that range, let's listen to that. Sounds pretty solid. I'm going to reduce the decay now as it plays, just so you can hear what shortening that envelope sounds like. So if you just wanted a little bit more womp in the low end of your kick drum, without it sounding like an 808 stretching on forever, but you just want each thud to kick you in the chest a little bit more, the decay knob will allow you to control the envelope of that boom. Really handy. Also, you can listen just to the low end. I'm going to de-solo the kick drum, so we're listening to the whole kit again. And that way you're able to preview just the effect of the subharmonic synthesizer there. Awesome. Let's dial this back a little bit. We don't need quite that much for our purposes for this. Maybe a lower amount here. And the last two controls here are the output gain and also very handy, the dry wet mix. So once you've dialed in a sound that you really like, you may come back to it later and say, hmm, I'd like a little bit less of that, a little bit more of that. And the dry wet mix provides you a way of blending back in the dry signal with your affected signal. Let's listen to some of that. I think John Bonham would be proud of this plugin. So that's a walk through all of the primary controls of the drum bus audio effect. I think this one's a home run and you're going to be hearing this used on everything real soon. 
If you liked what we covered in this video, we have lots more where this came from in our free Warp 10 course. Rather than wasting your precious studio time sifting through a sea of tutorials, we've put everything you want to know about Live 10 in one place. Our entire team of Ableton certified trainers has spent the last three months making this custom course for you. Hop on the fast track and learn Live 10 at warp speed. Click the link, jet over to Warp Academy, and you'll get instant lifetime access. Thank <laughs> you.